of guys day number one two and two and it's list day i guess list day and today is part two of my Yu-Gi-Oh jargon last list went pretty well and i had tons of comments about other terms in this game that us as players use as well as there was some leftover from when the discord made it as well so i figured why not do Yu-Gi-Oh jargon 2 electro boogaloo I could probably even do a part three if you guys want it. Just let me know in the comments below if you want a part three. It would be the most obscure, less used ones, of course. However, there is probably a handful enough left to do at least a half list. So let me know about that. A new person coming to this game may have no idea what the hell we're talking about. So we better lay them out. And without further ado, this is 10 more fan terms you need to know when I'm talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! Reborn. Reborn is referring to any time a monster is special summoned from either player's graveyard. Obviously taking inspiration from Monster Reborn, one of the most famous and I think the first card in the TCG that did such a thing. However, anytime we are special summoning from the graveyard, us players tend to call that a Reborn or a Monster Reborn effect. Number nine, FTK or OTK standing for first turn kill and one turn kill, respectively, or knockout if you'd want to be less violent, referring to some wombo combo in Yu-Gi-Oh that allows you to claim victory in just one turn. An OTK, or one turn kill, is normally referring to the ability for you to be able to muster 8,000 or more damage on board and attack through a board for game, thus only taking one turn of play in order to muster game. FDKs can be the same thing, uh, however, it is implying that what you are doing is happening decidedly on the very first turn. Granted, some OTKs are FDKs and some FDKs are OTKs, depending on who went first, and whether or not you consider turn one the first turn of the duel, or turn one is as the first turn you are able to play. So, it's a bit wishy-washy. However, FTKs tend to be referring to weird burn loops where your opponent never even gets a turn, this is the first thing you're doing, and you just loop like 800 burn damage a million times until they die. So they are a bit interchangeable depending on what we're talking about. Number eight, retrain. Retrain's a fan term referring to any time Konami seems to take inspiration from an older card, makes it a newer card, and has an improved effect. Something like Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning could be considered a retrain of the original Black Luster Soldier Ritual Monster. Envoy of the Beginning is considered a retrain because it is clearly inspired by the original, because it is the same character in the card, or his exact double, but it is improved in every other facet except its stats. It is still level 8, it is still 3,2500, 3, however it is now not a ritual, which automatically makes it better and less clumsy to use, and has an effect to banish or attack twice, so it's a retrain. However, when Konami retrains a card, it's not always to the card's benefit. Sometimes it's in order to make the card, uh, less broken? Tribe Infecting Virus is a fantastic monster card, and given a large enough hand size or a less than diverse opponent type pool, you can just nuke your opponent's board for all their monsters. The card was banned for a very long time, so Konami retrained it with Tribe Shocking Virus. This card's not nearly as good. It only blows up stuff depending on the type of the monster you got rid of in your hand instead of just letting you pick, which makes it pretty bad. Also, it banishes the one in your hand instead of discard, which is also, but we're not going into these two cards. Those are retrains. Number seven, Upstart. Referring to Upstart Goblin, a one-for-one one draw card that people were running at three because it lets you use basically a 37 card deck. Idea being, the minimum cards you can play is 40, so if you can somehow cheese cards and put in filler cards, you can play a slightly smaller than 40 card deck. If there was no minimum in Yu-Gi-Oh, Upstart Goblin wouldn't be very good. However, because there is a minimum amount of cards that were in order to play a deck, a seemingly no advantage draw card can still be good given the right circumstance. The fact that it's a normal spell means that you can just use it, which is great. And cards like the Danger Monsters, which allow you to just draw one card when they're summoned, sometimes are referred to as upstarts. No, I don't mean that they are just a rowdy bunch of hooligans, although maybe Snack is. <laughs> But no, they simply emulate Upstart Goblin's ability to draw you one card. Some people might say the Nightmares are the same thing, although they also discard, so there's some argument to be made. 
Number six, book. When you throw the book at somebody, you are referring to Book of Moon. Book of Moon! Book of Moon is a quick play spell card that allows you to put one monster in the field face down in defense position. Seemingly a neg one for a pretty bad effect actually ends up being a pretty solid tech card, showing us the utility of playing something face down. Being a spell speed two and chaining it to certain effects can shut things down, make things fizzle, ruin opponent's battle phase. There's lots of really weird things you can do depending on the cards you're interacting with, with Book of Moon. Because the card was so prevalent and so used and so forbidden and then limited for such a long time, the card is now synonymous with any effect that puts a card face down. So when you book something, you put it face down defense position. Number five, foolish. As in how I felt when scrubbing through the footage and realized I somehow managed to skip number five. I swear I did not do this on purpose. <laughs> this is days later. <laughs> Foolish is a term in Yu-Gi-Oh referring to the spell card Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial is a normal spell that allows you to send one monster card from your deck to the graveyard. This is handy because a lot of decks like setup and having cards in your graveyard is sometimes the way decks set up. If you're something like zombies or destiny heroes or I don't know, sail a man greats, just anything that has graveyard effects, sometimes getting a choice card out of your deck straight to the graveyard is a great way to get your plays going. So in Yu-Gi-Oh! when we refer to a card effect as a foolish effect, most of the time we are talking about sending a choice card from your deck to the graveyard. Konami's even seem to kind of adopt this because we have cards like Foolish Burial Goods, which is a play on the original Foolish Burial that sends spells and traps. So like, even they are kind of, you know, adopting famous cards to mean certain stuff. Kinda. Because both cards exist, some people just say anytime you dump a card out of your deck to the graveyard, it is a foolish effect regardless if it's a spell trap or monster. <laughs> Man, this number five's a mess. But, uh, you could probably go either way with it. Doesn't really matter. It's dumping a card, buddy! Alright, I gotta get back to editing now. Number four, Armadis. Referring to this synchro monster of the same name, basically it's a monster that when it attacks during a battle phase, your opponent really can't do much in response to the declaration of that monster's attack. Whether it's all effects or just spells and traps depends on the monster, but most people will refer to some monster that has some sort of prevent stuff from happening while it's doing its attacking as an Armadis type effect. Part of the reason why I like my Ultra Athletes so much is because we have a main deck Armadis which is really handy. And with the new support, the deck's okay. I'm super excited. I would, I don't wanna be talking about UAs, not, not jargon. Number three, honest. This is a real term in Yu-Gi-Oh, I swear, honest. <laughs> honest is referring to the monster of the same name simply called Honest. I bet there's some like really funny bootleg cards of Honest where like it's just synonyms for it and that would be funny but anyway. Honest is a monster you can discard from your hand to increase the attack of a light monster on your side of the field by the attack of something that it's battling. This battle hand trap, see part one for that one, is a fantastic card because it allows your light monsters to get over pretty much anything they're fighting or something that's fighting them. Decks like Light Swarns and Bujins abuse this kind of card. Because this card became so famous for its attack boosting abilities, any monster that you can pitch during the battle phase has now become an honest. Whether it's a set increase in attack power like something Alistair does, or something more akin to a uh, context sensitive attack increase like Bujin uh, Crane, people tend to call these cards honests because they are attack boosts during the damage calc. Number two, T-Set. If your opponent has claimed that you T-Set and you don't know what it means, just know they're making fun of you. A T-Set in Yu-Gi-Oh is when in your opening turn, you put a monster face down in defense position and then in the same column, set one card face down. It, it looks like a T, it's a T-Set. The reason why they're making fun of you when they point out the fact that you have performed a T-Set is because in Yu-Gi-Oh, that has never been a good opening move. <laughs> 
incredibly disrespectful. Even in 2003, or whenever the hell this game had started, 2002, T-Set Pass is a terrible opening. It's extremely weak, it puts very little pressure on your opponent, and pretty much says to your opponent, my hand was terrible, please win the duel. And as the years have progressed, it's just gotten weaker and weaker and weaker to the point where it is now a meme in the community, and a T-Set is just literally the worst. Frankly, it's so bad, in certain matchups, you are actually better off simply doing nothing. Something like Cyber Dragons or Mech Knights actually have a hard time playing if your opponent literally did nothing. But the fact that you T-set actually is helping them out win a little bit easier, so insult to injury. Before we get to number one, we do have some honorable mentions. Just like last video, these are terms in the game that can kind of apply to any card game, and their origins in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! itself are probably dubious at best. So we're just going to run through them real quick. They are still interesting and probably good for you to know, however. Floating. A monster with a floating effect in Yu-Gi-Oh! normally means that when it is sent to the graveyard in some fashion, it special summons or adds or does something to increase your card advantage, when it hits the grave. Most of the time, a floating effect is referred to a monster that when it is sent to the graveyard either summons itself or something else from the graveyard or deck to the field. However, I've seen people use it just for any advantage gain off the destruction of a card. Win con, standing for win condition. When someone asks you what's your win con, they're asking you how does your deck actually claim a victory? If it's Doki Doki Beatdown, that's not a very good win con. But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. If it's hard draw Exodia in a deck that has nothing to do with Exodia, that's not a good win con. If it's consistently put three negates on board and beat the hell out of your opponent next turn, that's a meta win con. Brick, a brick, a giant piece of brick, a man-made rock, brick. It doesn't do much when you're holding it, just like the hand it is describing. If you opened a brick, it is implying that part or your entire hand is absolutely useless to you. No matter how consistent your deck is, there is probably some five card combo that you can create, whether the likelihood of drawing it is almost zero or not, that will make you be able to pretty much do nothing. <laughs> you bricked. Sometimes people refer to garnets as bricks as well, where the whole hand isn't a brick, but one particular card is a brick to have in your hand. I have also seen that used. Starter and extender. Starters and extenders are important in Yu-Gi-Oh for your wombo combos. A starter is exactly what it sounds like, a monster that you put on the field and it starts your combo. Whether when it is summoned it summons something else or when it's summoned it searches something that you then get to summon or whatever it is, that's a starter. Something like Tour Guide from the Underworld. Only fans Tour Guide cosplay at 50k subs. And then we have Extender. An Extender is a card that when you're doing one thing, it tags along and gets you more board present. Something like Kage to Kage doesn't do much in your hand, so therefore it can't be a starter, but when you summon something else, it just tags along. It's an extender. You summoned one, but you got two. When building your deck, it's important to remember you want a lot of starters and less extenders, because if you have only extenders and no starters, you're gonna brick. See, see what we're doing here? We're learning. And I'm using the terms in context for you. <laughs> <laughs> Bomb or nuke, a card that just like destroys everything on the board. Uh, Regeki, Dark Hole, uh, Black Rose Dragon, just. <laughs> and last but not least, Engine. An engine is a small grouping of cards that you place in your deck that serves some kind of function. If you are playing an artifact engine, you are playing a couple of copies of Sanctum and a few choice artifacts in order to try to disrupt your opponent. If you're playing the Brilliant Fusion engine, you are playing Brilliant Fusion, a Garnet, and a Light Target, and Seraphonite in your extra deck in order to allow you to have free board presence plus an extra normal summon. They are some small thing added to the deck in order to help it or let it do some other function. That is the easiest way to describe that in the shortest amount of time. <laughs> it's an engine. It makes the deck go. There, there you go. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout, you can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. Number one, boss monster. The reason why I put this in number one, 
I like boss monsters. Don't like kaiju so much. <laughs> I laugh at my own stupid joke. If you know what a boss monster is, you, you understand the kaiju coming. The boss monster is any singular monster that your deck is trying to make that seems to be your win con. See what I did there? If you're playing Towers Turbo, your your objective is to play your boss monster, Applica Fort Tower. I'll never remember how to say this thing. Applica Fort Towers. Applo App Cliff Fort. Stop putting Q's in the middle of words, Konami. That's not where Q's go. I'm looking at you, Halakafabrax. <laughs> but yeah, Towers is your boss monster. It's the objective of the deck. It's like you're putting all your eggs into one big number basket. In Frogs, your boss monster is totally awesome because he's totally awesome as a boss monster. You make him and he hopefully wins the game for you. So you're putting all your resources into one monster, which is why when it gets kaijued, therefore tributed and sent off the board, it's a big nag. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! Anyway guys, that was Yu-Gi-Oh! Jargon 2. Let me know in the comments below if you want a Jargon 3. I'm sure I could, at the very least, make some up for you. <laughs> Actually, a bunch of made up terms would be kind of funny. Joke vid! Anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling. Fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!